Hey everyone, this is Keith Scott from out in Sydney, Australia. I'm one of the voices of Bullwinkle J. Moose. It's time to watch Relentless and Unstoppable. And so give it up for your main hosts, Douglas Kenny and Andy McPhee. Hey everybody, this is Doug Kenny and welcome to Relentless and Unstoppable. We have another amazing guest coming on the channel today, so please hit like and subscribe. And after this episode, please stay tuned to the RNU channel for more amazing guests. Let's get this on! Hey everybody, how you doing? Just a, a quick uh, little share of why I started Relentless and Unstoppable. It was for one very simple reason, because of Doug Kenny. Nothing to do with me at all, zero. I was just coaching Doug and he took on the coaching and mentoring and he made all the changes. He took all the suggestions from his his parents as well as my, my coaching, but it was all about Doug, his breakthrough and his weight loss, uh, he, his willingness to accept that uh, he is dealing with high functioning autism and, and other issues, but he's never quit, he's never given up. So we did one interview with him to share his story and then we decided to start interviewing other people. And Doug has now taken over the whole channel and he does all the interviews. He runs everything. He's just an amazing young man. So RNU was born from simply what an amazing young man Doug is and his story needed to be shared. What were you going to say, Danny? Oh, nothing. I just had. I was just looking into the sunset. That's why the light came on my face. Is that? I see your sky. It's so pretty. Yeah, isn't it beautiful? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm I, in Cambria. I, uh, I don't know if you know where that is. It's near. Uh, it's like right between San Francisco and LA. It's about two hundred and something miles north wow. of LA, and and exactly same south of uh, San Francisco. Yeah. It's a lovely area. Can you hear never, the ocean? Can you hear it? Big crash. The surf is huge right now. I can, can imagine it? it. I don't hear it, but I see it. Oh, that's beautiful. Look how that sun just lays on the top of that water in all different shades. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice my sun. God. Like a, a rainbow on the land. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> wow. Well, this was a blessing having this meeting tonight. Um, the, I mean the this show tonight with you guys i'm really yeah. um glad that i got to talk to you danny and so oh, how, sure. have you been? how have i been yeah well i've been doing pretty good i'm just about to move out of my mom's home and i'm gonna be living in a group home real soon i'm moving out in february and just preparing for the holiday season and you know knowing <laughs> it's christmas it may be a good time to get out the DVD and watch Joseph again. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm you know, I haven't, and, I haven't seen it for a long that. time. Maybe I'll do that too. Yeah. yeah. It's a really a classic. You know what I thought was really good about the ending when Joseph revealed himself to his brothers. It was nice to see that they acknowledged that his dreams that upset them in the first place were real. Mm -hmm. They, they were able to see the entire time as well that God had a plan for Joseph and for them because mm. Joseph's dreams was talking about how he would eventually save Egypt and them from the famine. You know, yeah. right? Yeah. It hum yeah. it humbled them, and yeah. I don't know if I would have been that calm after seeing them come up, you know, in a in a lineup and uh, and to actually show who he really was. I I'd, I'd be like, oh, look who it is. But I, I was waiting for that, but he was very humble. Um, well, and it's a good thing he was. I mean, it's interesting to think that uh, he had he was able to forgive them for what yeah. they did. And had mm -hmm. he, because he, he was a very powerful position at that point, he could have right. called for their immediate execution had he wanted to, and it right. would have happened. And had he done that, we would have not gotten the Savior, because from the from the lines of of those of the brothers, I think it was Judah. Right. The, the descent of Judah was Jesus, and so, right. and because Joseph was had learned to forgive them, and uh, let them live, and they reunited.
united and everything, that bloodline went on and brought us wow. the Savior. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that neat? I didn't realize that. Yeah. I was raised think about. Catholic and I'm reading, um, I'm away from the Catholic church now because I'm in West Virginia um, at a Unitarian church because all the churches in LA were all locked down and all that stuff. So when I got here, I'm like, what church is this? You know? And they said, Oh, it's Unitarian. I'm like, if this is a cult, I'm leaving, but I'm going to go in because <laughs> I've been missing church. And the preacher, right. uh, the minister, he just strictly, um, was teaching from the Bible, no sideline to it. I mean, he wasn't, you know, trying to twist anything. And I knew a lot of the, um, the Christian rock songs that they were singing a really good band too. Um, really nice, humble, beautiful, um, music. And, mm -hmm. um, so I'm really learning all those different parts of the Bible that I wasn't taught in Catholic school. We only were taught certain things. People, you know, even though we were supposed to be all Christians, that isn't what happened. Uh, yeah. It gets complicated. So I love this story. And I'm, and yeah. I'm, I'm over here watching the chosen and I find out that they're a big part of, um, well, Stroll Magazine, um, the guy, one of my best friends here, the husband and wife, Bob Coburn, he's one of the um, directors and writers for Stroll Magazine in all the states. And um, the director for Chosen and the um, a lot of the uh, investors, they're a part of the Greenbrier, which is connected with Glade Resort, where I am. And um, I'm like... How can I be this blessed? And everything's right here. And I can't find a studio to, to do this. Like, this is like, the, it would be perfect otherwise. All I need is that. But that's how Satan works. You know, it's like, ha, ha, ha. How's it feel of wine? You know, like he got everything. But <laughs> um, that's how I feel sometimes. Like, I, I'm being, I, I got like a tiger by the tail back of me, you know, and I got to constantly go like this, you know. Get it off me and just keep moving forward and don't give up. And it's been a hard ride. I switched to um, with this album I'm doing. Uh, it's more like Christian rock music, although not all my songs are considered that. But yet you can play it on those stations. I had to watch what I sang when I was in L.A. Like not don't start with the Jesus thing and yeah. nah, the God stuff. Not too. So I did, you know, still sang about, and thank God we're, you know, here and um, and peace and love and courage and have faith and keep moving forward and unite. And uh, but now I can sing Yahweh reigns, Yahweh Abba, Abba Father, you know, and and just feel really good, you know, mm -hmm. and. Uh, but I want this album to be the best of the best because I feel like this might be my last. And this is everything I ever saw all my life as a child when my mom thought, I, you know, you're crazy, shut up. But my grandma, who was very perceptive, and I had an aunt that was very perceptive, like, just don't worry. Don't don't say nothing. Just thank God. Just pray to I know what you're talking about. And then they would tell me, I had a dream. What do you think about this? And I would tell them. <laughs> my Interesting. Like, oh my God. And uh and protect me and pray for me all the time. And mm -hmm. uh so all of that and all the things that I've been through up till now and up to actually living in the time of revelations, always seeing revelations and that we it was like me being lifted up as a child. Uh I still remember the ground just splitting apart and fire coming out of the ground and these real high high telephone poles coming down with these spikes these extra spikes i was seeing 5g and didn't know it and i wrote mm. all that down years ago and then and wait you know what tidal waves and all but as i was looking around of being just shocked as a little child um i guess around four or five because i was wanting to play piano when i was three and i was able to just play but i I just remember somebody like just lifting me up, taking me by the hand, crossing me over this whole crack of the whole earth, cracking open, like splitting right down the middle. 
and just picking me up. And I just walked across to this, um, to the grass there. And all of a sudden when I, my foot touched the grass, everything went flat and it was all grass. And in the distance, it was ki keeping my eyes at the beauty that I couldn't really see, but the light and the colors and the little flowers. And I couldn't see what was past it, but that's how God, I believe, showed me that little mm. and knew what I was going to be doing when, you know, as a visionary with my music and helping others along the way with just hard, crazy jobs. I don't know why I even did them or volunteered, but here I am in um, Revelations. And if this, this is my last uh, uh, album, I want, I have the songs in the end, uh, Dark Castle in the Night, where I used to record and all the dark people would be there, you know, with all their crap and, you're trying to put out music and tune stuff out and pray for them. And I sing about that. And I sing about, you know, uh, no fear, having no fear and, and, and raising God up and being raised, raised up where mm. I feel like we'll just be taken by the hand and the rest is just going to fall apart. We're not even going to be, we're going to be so glad that God is finally doing something and, and that we're protected it's not going to matter. And mm. all of our tears will be wiped out of our eyes. We won't have a need to cry anymore, Doug. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Gee, that's all we have for Relentless and Unstoppable. So tune into the next episode to hear more amazing stories from amazing guests. This is Keith Scott from Sydney, Australia, saying so long and the uh, I'm smarter than the average bear. Gee.